G'day battlers and today we're jumping in for another brand new Go Battle League meta. This time it is going to be the Evolution Cup. Now the Evolution Cup is coming to Go Battle League next week. Uh, it is, it's a pretty easy one to understand. It's in the Great League and it is middle evolutions only. So a Pokemon has to evolve into it and then it has to be able to evolve again. So for example, Ivysaur evolves from Bulbasaur and can evolve again into Venusaur. So Ivysaur is eligible, whereas Bulbasaur and Venusaur are not eligible for this cup. And, you know, it's sort of a hard thing to visualize, like, what are the middle evolutions in this cup? It's not like one of those typing-based metas that you can sort of get an idea about what uh, what is actually going on. So I find that the best way to sort of figure out what we can sort of expect to see is by jumping into a little bit of an infographic and taking a look at what might be good and how they might interact. And, uh, ta-da! for the thumbnail. <laughs> so we've got five man groups in the center here and some extra Pokemon over here that are still definitely really good. Like they aren't over here because they're sort of side grades or side picks or like spice options. They are good, but we'll get to them a little bit later. First off, let's focus on these five groups over here. Starting in the top left, we have Zwilus as the only dragon on this main graphic. But again, do not understate how good dragons are in this meta. They are really, really good. Uh, we've then got Brione, Brione. I don't know how to say it. Please correct me because I'm going to say it wrong this entire video and I apologize in advance. Uh, as a pure water type, it doesn't actually have the fairy typing even though it does have access to charm. On the bottom left, we have ghost types, Haunter and Dusclops. Bottom middle, we have the fighting types with Machoke and Vigoroth. Well, fighting sort of the fighters, even though Vigoroth does not have the fighting type. And then in the bottom right, we have the poison types with Golbat and Nidorina. And so we'll just sort of jump straight into it. I think that... Uh, a lot of people sort of been saying that Vigoroth is going to be a bit of a meta-defining Pokemon, and that is correct. Uh, if we sort of focus in on the fighting types on this graphic, there are three arrows coming towards them and only one arrow going out to them, and that is just as wireless. But that is a little bit deceiving. Because Vigoroth is a Pokemon that can be really dangerous with a little bit of an energy advantage, you swap into it, you get one counter, and it just gets to body slams so fast. It can really flip a lot of matchups that it otherwise would lose. So even though there's a lot of arrows coming towards Vigoroth, it is still really strong and is also really strong against a lot of the Pokemon that aren't featured on this graphic. For example, uh, Magneton, which definitely has a place in this meta. Uh, Celio, who's uh, you know down here, really good against Celio as well, and other ice types that are eligible. So Vigoroth is still really good there. Machoke is a little bit of a downgrade in my mind from Vigoroth. So it has access to low kick. It doesn't have access to counter. And I mean, low kick did recently get buffed in the new Go Battle League uh, season update. Uh, so it is still like, it's good. It's good. It's pretty highly ranked on PV Poke and it definitely has a place in this meta. I just don't think it is as good as Vigoroth, which I mean, it does like do super effective damage to Vigoroth, so it definitely has a place in that regard. Uh, but y y you know what I mean. I think Vigoroth is just sort of the, the better fighter in that regard. The other big Pokemon that people are talking about is Zwilus, because it's hard to get a real hard counter in there. Zwilus is really good against the ghost types because it has access, it's got the dark typing, it's got access to uh, dark pulse as well. Uh, it, it is weak to the fighting type uses, but is still able to do a lot of neutral dragon damage. There isn't much in the way of fairy action going on in this meta. There's definitely a few that you can bring in, um, but there's only one charm user, and that is a... That's that one right there, which doesn't even have the fairy typing. So it's actually still taking a fair bit of damage from the dragon breaths and the body slams that are coming through from Zwilus. So it's not an easy thing, but there is one charmer user that you have to watch out for if you're Zwilus, I suppose. Now, there's no arrow between Zwilus and the poison types. Uh, in general, Zwilus actually does do pretty well against both of them. Nidorina has a little bit of a better time uh, than Golbat, I do believe. Uh, I think Nidorina is just that little bit extra tanky because it does take a lot of XL candy. I don't know how many of you have an XL Nidorina built other than like Enhoff out there. <laughs> she definitely does. Uh, but you know, it's, it's an expensive one. And if you're just going to play for the week and then, you know, that's it maybe dabble here or there. I think Golbat probably serves your purpose just fine, giving you access to a poison type user. Uh, we are getting a little distracted though. Uh, so let's talk about uh, Brione, Brione, because I think that it is a Pokemon that is a little slept on. I think it's like not even in the top 50 on the PvP Poke rankings, but I thought it was really important to stick here because it is the charm user. It is the charm user in this cup. 
And so it is really good against all of the dragons that are eligible. Again, Zwilus is the only one over there, but there are more over here, and they are definitely a, a solid presence in this cup because it, uh, dragons have a lot of neutral damage, and pretty much everything has to be scared of it because there aren't many fairies running around and only one charm user. Now, you've also got super effective damage going into a Machoke, who has the fighting type, so you're doing really good there. Not as good against the Vigoroth, because unfortunately uh, for Brione, Vigoroth does not have the fighting typing, and Brion doesn't have the fairy type, so it also doesn't resist counter. So Vigoroth does actually sort of win out over Brion in pretty much every scenario, but uh, still is able to sort of charm through a lot of matchups and is a really good neutralist. Uh, as we sort of know, charm can charm through a lot of teams uh, in pretty much every Go Battle League meta there is. Charm is going to be a force to be reckoned with, and this is definitely a meta that uh, does not change the formula. The sort of main counter to Brion, even though it is a water type and it doesn't have the fairy type, the uh, the poison types are sort of still the sort of main counter uh, with Golbat and Nidorina. Has to be a little bit scared of Aqua Jet, of all things, like, okay, Aquajet, uh, but Charm isn't doing much to them, and uh, it's also got Disarming Voice as a charge move that you kind of have to run, uh, which isn't going to do much to the Poison type users uh, either. There's no arrow between Brion and the Ghost types. That can be a little bit back and forth, uh, just because Dusclops has a lot of bulk, uh, and it's sort of hard for Brion to get through it. Uh, generally, uh, it does do okay against Haunter though, but Haunter has the poison type as well and is sort of, uh, depending on what moves Haunter is running, because there are sort of options, uh, we'll talk about that in a sec, I think Ice Punch is guaranteed, but the other move could be a little bit of a gamble, but in most cases Haunter is probably going to win out as well, so the ghost types are probably usually going to be taking out Brion, so Brion, like, it's not a great Pokemon, it's not even a good Pokemon, but it's definitely a Pokemon that I sort of feel has a place in this meta and you're definitely going to see you know youtubers with brion in the thumbnail going you know charms down the meta or some, something like that so it's definitely got a place and some teams are going to get absolutely swept uh swept away by brion uh and it is really useful in a meta where dragons don't really have much to sort of resist it like when dragons are so powerful with neutral damage it is really useful to have that uh, charm access now the ghost types as mentioned before uh dusclops already had access to ice punch i'm pretty sure but haunter has just been given ice punch in the new go battle league update and that is like literally just for this meta like that's why it was given ice punch it was in preparation for the evolution cup because as we said dragons are really scary so giving these guys access to ice punch does sort of help them out against most of the dragon types the exception being Zwilus, because Zwilus has the dark type, so unfortunately doesn't do as well against Zwilus. But the other ones are like Dragonair and... what What's the middle one called? It's not... Como-O is the last one. Jangmo-O is the first one. Middle-O-O Dragon. Hakmo-O, maybe? I think it's Hakmo-O. Unless that's the last one and this one is Como. I don't know. It, it, it's that thing. Like The picture's right there. If you know what it is, you know what it is. I've literally never seen it in my game. I don't have enough Jangmo O candy to evolve it, so I don't know. I have no idea, but it is a dragon type, and it does not like ice punches coming in from either Dusclops or Haunter. Haunter definitely has a much larger attack stat, so it does do more damage with those ice punches, whereas uh, Dusclops is able to soak in more dragon breath damage while dishing out the ice punch damage. So you can kind of, it uh, depends how your play style sort of favors, whether you want to go for the Haunter or the Dusclops. You don't need an XL Dusclops to sort of perform well. Like you can just go for a Hundo Dusclops and it'll still do pretty well. You won't get as much bulk, but you will get more attack. And it definitely, it still does the job. Like the Pokemon and the moves are much more important than the sort of IVs and the level and the XLness. So I wouldn't worry too much about that. Um, other than that, we've sort of covered most of the bases here. Uh, there's also no arrow between the ghost types and the poison types. Golbat has access to that Shadow Ball that can be quite scary, but with Dusclops and uh, Haunter both having access to Ice Punch, uh, they can do a lot of damage back as well. But that one's going to be a little bit shield dependent, I feel, and going to be some baits, uh, especially with respect to the Golbat going for Poison Fangs or Shadow Balls. It's going to be a little bit of a bait dependent dealio there. But that's sort of the main groups. But let's talk about these ones because I've, I've sort of said it a few times now. But dragons are going to be seriously important in this meta because of the neutral damage they do. So things like Dragonair, 
mystery o o <laughs> are definitely going to be around as well as any other dragons people can sort of bring in here uh fracture uh the middle evolution of haxorus and axu uh is also eligible it has access to uh actually does it have counter or does only haxorus have counter i'm not sure but i don't think oh you're going to see many uh fractures around uh if people are going to run triple dragon breath it's probably going to be zwilus dragonair and mystery o o uh and then because the dragons are so good if you don't want to run with sort of a little bit risky Haunter and Dust Cops with Ice Punch or the Brione with the Charm and like not resisting Dragon Breath, that's where the Ice Types come in in things like Celio that can also actually have Body Slam Spam. What is it with Middle Evolutions and Body Slam Spam? I don't know, but it does definitely make them good. And of course, uh, access to the Powder Snow and Aurora Beam that can do a lot of damage as well. I don't think there's much reason to run water pulse in this meta i think aurora beam is probably just like the way to stick to because you've also got something big to throw at uh, golbat like flying types that might be running around uh so uh with that said there are definitely some other pokemon and i recommend checking out pv poke uh for the rankings on there to see sort of the other pokemon that are eligible but this is sort of just the starting point uh, to get you sort of brain turning around what is eligible in the evolution cup and get an idea about what you might be seeing next week uh so with that said thank you for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe especially that subscribe one thank you to all my lovely patreons and youtube members for being absolutely lovely human beings because they they really are and um yeah check some other videos if you want and i will see you in the next one whatever that may be we'll see if halloween cup meta may come out but we'll see i do have one from like two years ago so maybe check that out in the meantime if you're really curious but regardless i'll see you in the next one over and out Whee!